Good morning. My name is Nicholas Clay, and um, today I will, I will be presenting my research project for SHORE 2010. My research project deals with colloidal self-assembly using Janus particles. Um, I worked on this project at the University of Michigan under the Department of Chemical Engineering. My advisor was Professor Michael Solomon. Today I'll first talk about the background, introduce some vocabulary words and such to help us understand my project a little bit better. I'll then show you how I designed my experiments. We will then discuss the, my results and some things that didn't go so well. We will then talk about what I can do to the future to improve my experiments. So what are Janus particles? Janus particles are particles with two sides. Each side has a unique chemical or physical property. For example, the common type is a side with um, half, it, half of the particle is hydrophobic and the other half is hydrophilic. It is named after the Roman god Janus who had two faces. Um, colloids are something you probably encounter every day and you may not even realize it. For example, the milk that you drank this morning with your cereal is actually a colloid. Um, it is, bas is basically when you have one substance that is evenly dispersed in another. For our experiments, we'll be dealing with polystyrene microspheres that are dispersed in an organic solvent. So let's consider some other terms. Self-assembly, as the name implies, is when a micro or nano structure creates itself. It creates itself using only an external field, such as um, an electric field, a magnetic field, or something like that, and entropy. Zeta potential is very important when determining colloid stability. Zeta potential is defined as the potential difference between the dispersion medium and the stationary layer of fluid attached to the sphere. So what are we trying to do with these Janus particles and the self-assembly and stuff? Basically, our overriding goal is to try to replicate all those atomic structures that you learn in material science. You know, the BCC, the body-centered cubic, FCC, face-centered cubic and stuff. You also see rock salt and stuff up there. Basically, you're trying to recreate those, but instead of using atomic forces, using atoms and stuff, we're trying to recreate them using um, electrostatic forces, using microparticles and self-assembly. So how do we make these really cool dance particles? Our first step was to take a silicon wafer and um, deposit a monolayer of polystyrene particles on that wafer using spin coating. Spin coating uses really high um, rota uh, radial speeds to evaporate a solvent and evenly disperse, or distribute rather, the particles on the silicon wafer. Once we have them on the wafer, we take them to an E-beam evaporator. This is a really cool device that uses extremely low pressures and an electron beam to melt metals, such as gold and platinum. For our situation, we use gold. And given the nature of the E-beam evaporator, we were able to um, only coat one half of the side with gold, therefore giving our particles our much needed Janus nature. From here, we removed the particles from the wafer and transferred them into DMSO, which is our solvent that we're going to use for all our experiments. And as you can see from this slide, our creation of Janus spheres was extremely successful. You can see the one um, towards the middle right there uh, that has a very clear, you can see one side of it is shiny and the other side of it is dark. The dark side is the polystyrene, the shiny side of it is the gold. I also wish I could have gotten some confocal images, but the Janus nature of these particles has been confirmed several times. So as I said before, zeta potential is really important to colloid stability. So what's wrong with our colloids? In order to get really good self-assembly experiments, we need to have our colloid be evenly dispersed throughout our solvent for over two days. At present, our colloids start to clump together, all the particles mash together, and they all settle down, and our colloid is destroyed in about four hours. So how are we going to fix this rather pressing problem? To, to do so, we're, we're going to use style chemistry. Over the past 20 years or so, there have been numerous scientists who have taken gold nanoparticles, attached a variety of styles to them, and have found that a near, quote, permanent solution is created. The, um, 
And as you can see here, we're using a variety of different styles, each with different carbon chains, to try and play with our stability, see how we can improve it. Uh, basically, the style bond has an extremely strong affinity for gold, and um, it really likes to attach to gold. Um, we're going to determine how our college stability, or our zeta potential, changes with our thiol gold molar ratio. If we add more thiols, do we get a more stable solution? Do we need to do a one-to-one -one ratio? Um, where we need to improve to get the most stable colloid possible. Um, I really wish I could have shown you more data because this is really in progress. Last night I was working on this, on some new zeta potential measurements and stuff, so we're really trying to move uh, very quick on this stuff, but I can at least show you some stuff from a couple weeks ago. Um, as you can see, the axis, um, the horizontal axis is the thiol ratio, and the vertical axis is our zeta potential. With increasing um, thiol to gold ratio, we really don't see a specific trend right now. It is a repeatable trend because this is from an entirely different trial using different particles. So this trend is repeatable, but clearly much more study is needed. Thank you for listening to my presentation. I hope I was able to show you the exciting world of Janus particles and colloid stability, and I hope to present some better results to you next time. Thank you very much, and have a good day.